sometimes when you're reviewing NHL news, it's the smaller kind of subsection niche topics that have the potential to garner a more interesting conversation than the topics at the forefront, the ones that are the big name stories at the time. Which is why today, we're not going over a big headline here, we're not chasing a big story, no. Instead, we're talking today about a very niche Toronto Maple Leafs topic that Leafs fans will definitely have their own opinions about here, but that I thought was valuable enough of a conversation to bring into. So, without further ado, let's have a conversation about the Toronto Maple Leafs decor and Rasmus Sandin. Because Rasmus Sandin is a guy who has been sort of in the news lately because of the comments he made to the media regarding his play with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I say play with the Toronto Maple Leafs, I should rather have said non-playing or absence. Absence, that's the best word for that, yeah. His absence with the Toronto Maple Leafs. So in order to introduce this topic, let's go over the Toronto Maple Leafs line combinations here on dailyfaceoff.com. Right now, they have Morgan Riley with TJ Brody, Jake Muzzin with Justin Hall. Hall's been pretty good, by the way, this year. My gosh. Miko Lettinen with Zach Bogosian, and then you have a few other guys that are also playing. It's a 7D pairing system that has really been in here, and the Maple Leafs have pretty much just rolled out with a very high quantity of defensemen throughout the few games they've played so far. However, a name who has not been a part of this rotation is Rasmus Sandin, a top Leafs draft pick from the 2018 NHL Entry Draft. Remember, he was taken at the end of that 2018 first round, and he was a guy who, immediately after being drafted, showcased himself off very well with the Toronto Marlies first and foremost. The next year, playing for the Toronto Marlies, he was very good as well. He was extraordinary at the World Juniors for Team Sweden, and he ended off 2019-20 as a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs, with eight points in 28 games played, the 20-year-old left-handed defenseman is a guy who definitely does have a very good projectable NHL ceiling, and because he was the best defenseman at the 2020 World Juniors, a lot of people have been on the hype train for Rasmus Sandin. He's a guy who probably does have number one, number two potential on a defensive core into the long-term future. It's just a matter of whether or not he'll be able to get that with Morgan Riley and potentially Timothy Lilligren, who is indeed older, further along on the depth chart. But that's besides the point. We noted earlier about how the Toronto Maple Leafs are out here rotating seven defensemen throughout their decor, but Rasmus Sandin is not one of them. So far in 2020-2021, he has played zero games, and he has just mostly been a part of the practices, just hanging around the team, doing stuff, but not actually participating on the ice. Now, the next Maple Leafs game is on Thursday against the Vancouver Canucks, so who knows if things are going to change by then, but... The bottom line here is Sandin is a guy who has not been played, and he has voiced his frustrations with the media earlier this week. Take a look at this article over here. It's on the Toronto Star. Leafs prospect Rasmus Sandin keeps a stiff upper lip, but he sure would like to play a game again. Now, stiff upper lip is kind of like, you know, you're kind of holding your tongue. You're kind of not really saying outwardly what it is you're trying to say, even though you may be feeling a little bit more of an intense feeling than what it is you're projecting with your words. The article goes over what exactly the situation here is with Rasmus Sandin, how he's not been playing, etc. And there is indeed a comment here made by Sandin himself that kind of indicates his whole attitude towards not being played with the team. I mean, it's obviously a little frustrating. It was a very long time ago since I played a game. It's been like almost a year, if not a year already. But we're going to hang in there. We're having fun in practice, and it's great being with the guys again. Now, first off, before I get into anything more than that, I love how Rasmus Sandin said this. It's not, oh, you know, I think I'm better than Travis Dermott who is getting playing time, or why are they playing Miko Lettinen over me? It's unfair how it's going on. It's not any of that. It's just, hey... It is frustrating not playing, but just being here, just being in a position to be around the guys, it's okay. I just hope I can play soon. I love that, you know? I love the very formal way he kind of goes about talking about the frustrations. However, it's Sheldon Keefe who comes over here with a few other comments that kind of steer the conversation in a different direction here. Take a look at this. This is what Sheldon Keefe, the Leafs coach, said about Rasmus Sandin. We've really tried to prioritize with him the importance of using this time away from actually playing productively. 
to maintain or really improve his work habits and his time in the gym and his training in the gym and maturing his body and just learning what's necessary to be an everyday NHL player, not just from a skill standpoint, but the habits that go into it. Speak about run-on sentences, oh my gosh. I think there's some growth to be had there. We've spoken to him about that. He also says this, that the blue liner has plenty of off-ice learning to do. It's everything when you take your gear off, what you're doing to take care of yourself and improve yourself. And so, what's going on here, at least based off of this and from my own intuition, it kind of appears that the Leafs have stuff that Rasmus Sandin wants to work on away from his game on the ice. And just from the way these quotes are formulated, it seems like the Toronto Maple Leafs are going out here benching Rasmus Sandin, not letting him play any games to get him to focus on those off-ice areas. Now, I don't really know if that's all too smart in terms of developing a guy who is 20 years old, who has so much potential to grow in the NHL, who did not look out of place last season in the limited time he did spend with the Maple Leafs, but... I guess it's a philosophy that does in some capacity make sense, I guess. It's not really the way I would go about it, but you know, it's kind of funny how it works, right? This article in particular, though, goes over how a Rasmus Sandin dearth of playing time isn't really the most surprising thing in the world, mostly because of how the Leafs decor was assembled in front of Sandin on the depth chart. They were already locked into a top four of Morgan Riley, TJ Brody, Jake Muzzin, and Justin Hall. They signed Zach Bogosian, who was a depth player, and you're not going to sign a guy with the intention of not playing him. And then Travis Dermott, for all his stumbles, was essentially a lock on the third pair. The point is also made that Miko Lettinen is a guy that they acquired from the KHL. He was that big free agent back last summer that was in the bidding war with Montreal and LA and eventually went to Toronto because of course he did. And because you get this guy brand new from the KHL, he was one of the hot shots over there, you're not going to sit him out for a prospect you have that does have, I guess, in some capacity, work to do in other areas. So even though it doesn't really make all too much sense, in my opinion, to be sitting Rasmus Sandin, a very capable NHL guy who has a lot of development time to go through, in replacement of a Travis Dermott or a Miko Lettinen, at the end of the day, that's just kind of how the priority works. That's kind of how the politics work over here when you have other players of other statuses coming into your organization. So it's definitely unfortunate to look at. Now for Rasmus Sandin, I'm pretty sure... Two, three, four years from now, nobody's going to remember how he is upset with the lack of playing time so far in 2021's shortened season due to the pandemic. But at the end of the day, I do think it is interesting to bring up because Rasmus Sandin, one of the top young guys in terms of defenseman talent in the NHL today, hasn't been getting any playing time. He hasn't played a single game and he himself has voiced his frustrations about that. So let me know in the comments what you think about Rasmus Sandin. Do you agree with the decision to keep him off in replacement of the seven other guys who are getting consistent playing time out there? The Leafs have a ton of D-men and Rasmus Sandin is one of them who's getting the short end of the stick. Tell me in the comments what you think about Keefe's decision to keep him off, his comments about Sandin and how he has off ice areas to work on, and the comments that Sandin made himself too because those certainly are some very interesting discussions to have. Let me know in the comments if you think I've enjoyed this video. So that's 9 and bye. <laughs>